Hello YouTube, my name is Alan Samsel and welcome to my channel, Alan's Cloud. Uh, today I'm going to be doing an update video on GPU pass-through using Proxmox. Um, I've done a previous video on this and I use that same hardware under the newest Proxmox operating system install that I just recently did uh, and I couldn't get it to work at first. So a uh, little bit of research, uh, some things have changed, so I'm going to pass on some of those new things to you folks and hopefully this will aid you in getting yours to work. So if that's interesting, stick around. All right, so let's talk about Proxmox. Uh, Proxmox, the very latest version of it, is uh, version 5.4-6. Uh, just installed it uh, this past weekend. Uh, I had uh, blanked out my primary uh, Proxmox uh, uh, PVE node, and um, it had, had been down for several weeks during maintenance, and um, I've had everything up and running on my alternate one, so I've, I've had all of my services and containers and everything working perfectly fine. Um, so... Uh, Proxmox, so the thing that I wanted to show you is uh, GPU pass-through in Proxmox that made things easier with some of these latest updates. Um, you know, it used to be that you'd have to go into the config file and, you know, uh, throw some things at the, the, the virtual machine itself uh, to enable that PCIe pass-through. It was very possible, uh, but they've actually aided in that and, and put it into, you know, with drop-down menus into the GUI. Uh, inside of Proxmox. Uh, you can also pass through uh, you know USB 3.0 which I, I've done as well and that you might see that in the in the container uh, in the virtual machine settings that we're gonna go through. Um, so I, I'm not saying that you don't have to go into the config any longer that is still a very valid method of, of uh, putting some of the tweaks that you know sometimes that are needed for specific operating systems um, you know it, it, specifically I've been trying to pass a GPU into Windows 10 and uh, you know I, as I said in the intro this is the the same uh, Dell R710 um, with the exact same card in the exact same slot it's a uh, uh, GE Force um, GT710 it's got you know one gig of RAM it's it's not a, a gaming you know GPU or anything like that but um, you know essentially you can use it for uh, say for more video editing that was what I was going to use it for and I, I did test it with that and it does uh, show up in there um, you know I, I, I did install Steam after I got this working and um, you know could at least turn that on uh, so that was interesting. Uh, the gameplay was kind of goofy. I, I don't really recommend it. You could probably get away with uh, gaming through a virtual machine in, uh, you know, different hardware. But uh, the R710, uh, you know, still has its same limitations. That has not changed. So, uh, you, you know, the, the slot is natively a uh, times 8 PCIe 2.0 slot. Um, I've got a different video where you can go in and, you know, take the backside out of that lower slot. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Um, that's the riser number two card uh, and this one uh, right there you can on the bottom is the one that I uh, show you in the other video on how to take that piece out there um, and then so you can get the longer uh, card that might stick out a little bit further uh, you know and it, it makes it a little bit slower uh, but but it can work um, so you know, it's still an option. It doesn't have to necessarily be just a, a card that fits in the times eight slot. Is is my point? Um, but uh, you know, again, you're still restricted to. Uh, you don't have uh, a normal power supply like you do in in a regular ATX case. So you can't you know steal a cable over or daisy chain off of a different uh, device. Um, you know, there, there there's some things you can do within reason. Um, you know, uh, but you know, I'm not not a big fan of, of getting out the soldering iron and, and going in and putting extra leads where the power supplies are and things like that. Um, it's not that I can't do that. I would just prefer not to. Um, that's a little too in depth for what we're trying to do here. Um, so, um, you know, the startup power for the GPU is, has to be under a certain wattage or it will throw an error and it won't let you boot up. Uh, so, so none of that, you know, that has applied uh, in the other videos about putting a GPU into a Dell R710 has changed. Uh, so just, you know, know that uh, from the start that um, if you're coming into this brand new, this video is, is uh, you know, predicated on um, previous knowledge that has been passed on or, or that you should be looking up. Um, so there are limitations. Um, 
But I will put some links uh, to some cards, uh, some some uh, Amazon affiliate links down in the description of cards that I think might work. But uh, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt, and uh, please read the descriptions if it says that it's low profile or high profile. And I'm not responsible for whatever shows up, so just you know, buyer beware. Um, so you know, let's let's um, let's get right to it. I'll uh, I'm going to show you a new guide here today uh, that was posted on Reddit, and, and it is kind of an accumulation of a whole bunch of information. All right, so onto the browser and get my face out of the way. Uh, not Heimdall. That's one of my Docker containers. I love Heimdall. It's a great program for uh, launching all of your different uh, links and and you know getting to your home pages for your different. Uh, places I highly recommend it if you uh, looked at the other docker uh, video that I did on running docker inside of LXC this is one of the things that I'm doing um, with that LXC container uh, along with uh, ubiquity and you know a couple of other of these LXC um, docker containers um, so right here in the uh, here I'll show you but first uh, this is the previous video that I did on uh, Dell R710 with GPU passer on Proxmox. Um, you know, at the moment it's got you know 3.3 thousand views, so a lot of people have seen this so far. Uh, and and again, some things have changed since you know September of uh, 2018. So, you know, six seven months, and and um, they've added some new features. So uh, that's what we're gonna kind of go through here and and update to that video. So uh, here in the uh, Proxmox PVE environment. Um, I, you know, I, I set this thing up, I called it beast, um, you know, <laughs> in comparison to some of the other machines here in the house, maybe this thing is a beast, uh, but, but not necessarily, it's, it's not a thread ripper by any means. Um, but you know, there's some, um, some lessons learned in trying to set up a windows 10 virtual machine here in Proxmox. Uh, you know, and that comes along with, uh, you know, some of the changes and tweaks that you do to the hardware, uh, itself and how you go about installing it. And, um, you know, some of the options that you use. So, uh, over here on Reddit, uh, in the subreddit of home lab, there's this ultimate beginner's guide to, uh, uh, GPU pass through on Proxmox, right? This guy here, C J A L A S. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, did a great job putting all of this together. This is an accumulation of information from um, all of his testing, and um, you know, it, it's it's essentially a, a couple of the different guides and some personal information that he's gone out and found on different websites too. So, uh, you know, good compilation of of information. Um, so. You know, two of the things about it, though, uh, that that I that I would add to it, um, you know, when you get to the stages about uh, using the Vert I/O uh, uh, drivers for Windows uh, to to make things compatible, you know, with Proxmox. Um, so there's, uh, you know, two things. So the the Vert I/O driver link that he's got posted in there is is actually to the um, latest and greatest. I think it's version. Uh, 174 or you know 172 something it's in the high 170s but that is not the stable version the latest stable release is 141 and that's from back in you know 2017 so I highly recommend that if you're going to start off and do this you use 141 and then if you get to the point where where those drivers and and things that aren't in 141 in the stable version aren't working for you then you can move on to you know the latest and greatest uh, you know bleeding edge of those drivers which which they are you know that that version of it is is only maybe a couple of days old uh, of when it was posted um, so that's uh, uh, you know the vert IO driver disk suggestion um, and then you know the the other piece of that is uh, you know and I'll put a, a link down uh, in the description to the stable drivers just to make it easier for people to find but <clears throat> the second thing is when you're going about installing the virtual machine you know you, you go through the steps to set it all up um, and you know before you ever first turn it on to, to do the install um, you know he's got it in here set up and a lot of people do it this way where you just use one CD-ROM drive and that's where your ISO file for the Windows 10 is is sitting and you boot from it and you can you know it's just like taking a CD in and out so when you get to the point in the install um, you know if you use one CD-ROM drive where it can't find your 
you know, um, Proxmox uh, para virtualized storage, which is going to be, you know, a SCSI drive, um, you know, Windows won't see it. It won't be able to, to find your virtual hard drive. So you have to actually install the driver for it. So uh, what you do is you, you actually go back to your, your you know, PVE and you hit eject. Um, so essentially here, we'll go back to the page and you go to like this drive here this is the cd drive for this machine and right now the iso file that's in there is uh, the vert io 141 so if i double click on it you know i can come here and, and and you know if this was the windows one i could swap it out you know if it was the windows one i could drop that down and then pick the vert io driver um, you know go through the process of installing it uh, into the virtual machine but you know as soon as it it gets installed it pops up and then there's a little note at the bottom from Windows saying hey I can't install Windows on this drive well, that's not exactly true um, so the trick is is before you can proceed you need to come back here and pop out the the vert driver disk and put back in the Windows disk before you can actually proceed with the installation so you know to get around that what I'm suggesting is is just go ahead and and you know when you before you fire up the virtual machine for install come up here to add and add another cd drive you know it's super it doesn't matter if it's ide or sata add another drive and and so that the primary one that you boot to uh, in, in the options is you know so you'll add it here with the cd and then uh, in the options is where you change the boot order so when you double click on this one you're going to want to make sure that the cd rom drive um you know is is first and it will uh, you know i'm not sure if, if it'll have two different cd-rom drives in there or if it'll just pick the one that is an actual bootable cd-rom drive um or the first one uh which should be the windows disk but i've done it it does work um haven't had a problem uh and then you can you know go ahead and install the drivers uh perfectly fine from the vert io disk and not have to worry about you know taking it in and out you just have two virtual cd drives and then you can delete it later on so that's not really a big deal but you know i, I felt like that was something that um you know it was something that we could pass on as a lesson learned there so um you know the biggest advice when you're going through that guide is to you know just go ahead and and do things in stages um you know and and what i mean by that is um you know you can because it's a virtual machine when you install it don't make it this super beast uh you know like i did right out the gate i tried to make you know um a 24 gigabyte um you know i think i had 16 you know, threads in there the virtual cpus um and you know that that ended up causing problems and i'll, I'll go into that in a minute um but uh you know take your time go small first if if uh, you know you can create and install you know windows 10 with uh you know eight gigs of ram perfectly fine and then once you have the machine installed as so long as you shut it off you can come back in and add more ram to it later on so that you know kind of brings me to the second point is is you know uh, you know fully supportive of purchasing operating systems and you know activating windows and you know I'm, i'll probably end up getting to that point with the one that i've created here uh once it becomes useful and i know that it's stable but that's kind of the point you need to know these things are stable and uh the thing about windows if you if you go ahead and purchase a license and you go in and you make too many different changes to these virtual machines you know it can it can kill the license so you know get everything set up first you know flush it out really good before you go through and and actually activate a uh, a windows license on on one of these virtual machines um and and maybe you don't actually need to maybe your use case for the virtual machine um you know means that uh, with the you know the the non-activated version of windows um you know may work for you indefinitely and you know you're still using their their uh, windows environment and their app store um you know they're they're making money uh you know and, and they they've allowed the system to kind of gravitate towards that so um take it as you will so that was just another piece of advice there um so the guide here has you go through and um you know you change the grub first for um 
you know when it boots whether or not you're using an Intel chip and so I am and uh, so I ended up using that line there uh, but it has these additional commands here and it says that this is important and um, you know I, I don't disagree um, you know some of these extra things you know the first one there is, is setting up the IO MMU uh, on so that's uh, creating different groups for the different devices that you're going to use uh, but then he actually has um, this IO MMU uh, PT um, so I forget what that one means the ACS override downstream multifunction uh, is another one um, you know they don't have brackets but there's spaces between these so you can tell them apart um, of this whole line the only two that I did not use in my particular grub is the uh, no frame buffer and uh, no mode set uh, because I, I do actually have a KVM and a you know smaller monitor over the rack and if I le leave those in there the resolution on that kind of get goes wonky and gets too big it doesn't have to size itself so um, had you know nothing to do with with the performance of the GPU so I just left those options out of there um, but uh, yeah, I mean, follow, follow the guide here, um, the modules in, uh, check out your, your uh, interrupt remapping. Uh, this is how you blacklist the drivers so that um, the host system doesn't actually try to use that card that you want to use. Um, you know, this process here of, of identifying uh, the GPU that you're going to be passing through um you know and and you know setting that um you know, with the vendor id codes still have to do that um let's see here this is all about setting up the windows virtual machine all good information um i really want to highlight this piece here uh so the machine type has to be q35 um and now that is actually one of the selectable options when you're creating it uh, in the uh, virtual em environment. So if we hit create virtual machine here, and we're just going to name this test, and we hit next, and we're going to pull the Windows 10 ISO to start. We're going to call it Windows. I can show you the advanced ones here. Um, so when you get here to system, so the controller, he recommends coming in here and setting it to vert IO SCSI single. Um, I, I don't necessarily, I didn't use that. I just used the vert IO SCSI and it worked perfectly fine. But, uh, you know, the two important uh, bits right here is uh, going down here and changing this to the OVMF, which is basically their version of the UEFI um, BIOS system. And uh, you actually pick the storage that you want to put the little tiny hard drive that it creates the BIOS file and sticks in there. Um, so I'm going to put that uh, on one of the drives where I would put the file and then here's the machine so don't uh, this this is where you're going to pick Q35 uh, in that process so it defaults to this i440fx but if you want to do the pass-through of that um, GPU you're going to you're going to want the Q35 um, so the rest of these you know your 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 what, what he recommends is using SCSI um, so IDE is pretty slow. I, you know, and these are all virtualized, so I don't actually know what the speed difference, you know, would be between an IDE virtual uh, hard drive versus a SATA one versus a SCSI one. I, I honestly don't know. Um, but this VertIO block is what I was using in my previous video. Uh, it's block storage versus file storage, and uh, apparently it's going to be deprecated uh, in Proxmox, you know, in the future. Uh, so apparently it's not used uh, very much, and I, I don't know why um, it's worked for me, and it, it is still working for that virtual machine that I had set up and, and have been running all this time. Um, so I may end up having to switch things over to it. But this newer one that I set up, I did use SCSI. Um, and then uh, I put it on, you know, and wherever your storage is, as so long as it can hold it. And the size that I made for the... Uh, boot device for the Windows operating system. I made it 120 gigabytes and I've done this for a reason uh, because I've learned that uh, shifting these files around between machines, you know, if you create that hard drive uh, too big, uh, it can take some time to, to transfer that operating system. Um, so 
you know, what you can do is you can actually go in after the fact and, and create more virtual hard drives and, and attach them to this. So you'll have an, a, a, an E drive or a G drive, you know, however it is you want to map. Um, but it'll show up as if it's another hard drive. And, and you know, moving those around uh, works perfectly fine too. So, and copying them and, and bringing them in. So and they're 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 all numbered. So it, that's that I'll probably have to do a whole different video on how to get that to work. Um, but another piece uh, that's very important here when you're doing a Windows virtual machine and you've set up you know your SCSI hard drive right here, if you leave it with uh, default no cache, you're going to see some some delays. It's going to get a little bit laggy in there. Uh, so one of the things that I noticed that I had used in the uh, Vertio block drive was I came back uh, or came through here and and selected right back as the type of cache and uh, so I have found that in this new one that I've created I had to come back here because I forgot to set this uh, and I noticed it was laggy and I thought well you know what the heck it's it's a, uh, a temporary you know test operating system if I set this and it screws it up or if I can't set it you know I'll start over again uh, but it did allow me to come in here and change it and add the caching and um, you know all of a sudden it, it started working like it was supposed to so had had a nice uh, bit of snappiness to it with right back um, so here are a couple of important bits as well um, so the PCID flag you're gonna wanna set uh, and uh, enabling NUMA if you're using an R710 just like I am with uh, two actual uh, sockets um, so it, you know in here the mistake that I made uh, and, and before you do this, again, you're going to want to change the default KVM64 uh, here to host. Um, so that's going to take care of a, a lot of the things. Um, the only thing that you can't set in here, which would be a nice function, is if you could set the CPU to hidden. So hidden equals one is a flag that you're going to want to, um, you know, set uh, when you, you know, do the GPU pass through because NVIDIA... Um, will know that it's a virtual machine if you don't set that flag um, and and that's one thing Proxmox has not put in here yet and you do have to go into the config and change that so not a big deal but um, set that first so uh, the kind of important piece here so we're gonna do PCID and we're gonna do NUMA and um, the sockets right so uh, the mistake that I made in trying to make the beast machine right off the bat I came in here and I gave it one socket and I gave it uh, let's see here what did I give it uh, I gave it six no I gave it 12 cores so they you know it, it virtual CPUs uh, you know cores are the physical piece of, of uh, uh, the chip um, you know uh, that's the the socket in in their parlance here uh, the cores is is how many you know chips you're gonna give it essentially or how many of the processors and and they're virtual processes uh, processors or threads um, you know may, maybe I don't have that lingo quite right but that's that's how I think of it I and I have in this particular machine I have two CPUs two sockets and each one has uh, six cores um, six physical cores which you know you double that and that's how you get to 24 total virtual cores in this particular machine so uh, you know by doing this I should be giving it one CPU and all of the the virtual CPUs that go along with it um, but I ran into problems because of the way that I did this and because of the way NUMA works uh, which is a way to, to do memory access uh, sharing um, you know the the Proxmox host is running you know it's already it's already running on this machine so I, I, I wound up um, either between this error here or you know starting off with as much RAM that I did with 24 gigabytes um, you know right off the bat uh, the the virtual machine wouldn't start I kept getting um, uh, startup delay errors uh, and I, but I did find a way to fix that so so number one uh, if you want to do something like this here uh, what I ended up doing was giving it two sockets right and then I ended up giving it eight cores right so it's gonna multiply that and give you 16 you know virtual CPUs uh, that's that's really you know two two from each um, or, or eight from each chip and that worked perfectly fine 
That um, you know didn't cause issues with the Numa. It didn't cause issues with the virtual machine, and actually allowed it uh, to, to boot up. Now, because you're using this, um, and then and, and because of the the fix that I had to use, one of the things you're not going to be able to use is here under memory. Um, and again, I, I highly suggest you start off with uh, you know. Um, what is it? 4096. Uh, you know, whatever it is, four gigs of RAM. You know, to to do the installation. And unfortunately, you're going to have to turn ballooning off. Um, so the 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 way that we go about fixing the issue of of using that higher amount of RAM, if you want to go over say 16 gigs, um, you're going to uh, have to enable something um, called um, huge pages. I think it was called. Um, I'll show you but uh, so that right there and then for your network I picked the pair of virtualized uh, uh, of course uh, that works perfectly fine and uh, hit next and so don't start after created uh, and then also you know uh, you don't want to do start at boot at first uh, you, you may have to you know between things going wrong or or things getting stuck you may have to reboot the machine and you don't want it automatically firing up your uh, install virtual machine here not until you got everything set up correctly um, would you want to do the whole start at boot option even if then um, so so here you know again don't start it up afterwards you've got a couple of more tweaks to do you're gonna hit finish there and then it's gonna create it right here and that's the test one so you know here is where we go in and and uh, we actually add another CD drive we're gonna make it another SATA and the storage is local that's where my ISO files are and I'm gonna put the vert IO win 141 stable uh, in there as a second CD drive so I've got uh, IDE 2 is the Windows 10 CD-ROM and then I've got SATA 0 uh, is the vert IO one so when we do this install process here um, you know that's that's what's gonna work for us um, so you know important piece is knowing what the uh, container ID is the virtual machine ID which in our case here is 104 it's the fourth one uh, that I've created on this machine um, I think as far as options go I think we have set uh, everything that we need to here to install um, our, our Windows 10 virtual machine right off the bat. Um, there are a couple of tweaks before we would fire it up and that's what, what I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to go over here uh, to our remoter and we're going to shift to SSH. So this is that machine and we're going to nano uh, the config file which is 104.conf okay so in here this is where you're going to make those changes so um, the arguments that are in the guide that I had pointed out that that you need to put in here so the first one that is uh, really important and I, I was talking about it earlier in under CPU um, you need to have hidden equals one and then a, 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 a comma and then the flags uh, is, is already there uh, so the, the the flags plus uh, PCID is something that he's, he's got in there um, and that's uh, actually a checks checkbox now uh, that I showed you earlier so you don't actually have to come in here and, and set that it'll do it for you um, but the most important one is going to be the args uh, the arguments so we're going to copy this out of that guide and we're going to come here uh, and we're going to put it at the top because so I think you know it's, that's one of the nice things too Proxmox you can pretty much put it where you want and then Proxmox is going to rearrange it for you okay so now these these arguments that we've put in here um, are a, a further way of trying to get rid of the uh, dreaded uh, NVIDIA code 43 so NVIDIA you know they, they know better they're trying not to shoot themselves in the foot they have um, you know GPUs that are meant for virtualization so you know when you go to 
uh, run their driver installer executable it'll go and look and uh, if it if it finds itself in a virtual machine it's going to tell you um, that it can install the driver and then you're going to get these code 43 errors um, so this this line right here adding this uh, this uh, vendor ID um, you know that that's they use that because that's consistent with the naming convention there the NV 43 fix um, it can almost be anything uh, in there and it would work just so it shows uh, uh, some type of characters uh, so anyway so so those are uh, part of the arguments that you need there um, and then uh, let's see here I think for the moment that is all we need uh, as far as to do the installation of Windows 10 so we're gonna hit control O to write out to that 104 config file hit enter and then we're gonna hit control X I love nano uh, the VI you know some people are used to that uh, but I love the on-screen display there and it really helps me out because uh, you know in general I'm not really a Linux guy I, I do what I do though um, I pick it up here and there so um, that's it for now so if we swap back over to our browser uh, and we go back here to the virtual machine you can see that already um, the Proxmox environment here has read that config file and it actually shows you that the host uh, uh, hidden equals one is in there right so that's that's good um, so I think at this point you know we, we've got our hard drive set up uh, we've got everything set up we've got four gigs of RAM we can come in and we can change that later on um, so at this point I would actually fire this thing up and install Windows 10 you know go through the whole process um, you know go go through the installer uh, you know and and the updates at the end get everything up to speed uh, right then and there so again the only only two drivers that you really need to install from the vert io disk during that process and uh, you you do do the net kvm one first so the net kvm um i, I think it's net kvm it's the net driver it's actually for the uh para virtualized um nic card uh that goes in there so you can get all the updates uh you know while the installer is actually working it will see a network connection it'll use dhcp it'll pull an ip address uh and and that way it can you know talk back to the to the windows servers when it's doing its install um so that's helpful and then you know you don't actually have to install that uh into the windows 10 environment once you get in there it'll all be up and working you'll have an up and working uh, network layer so do the the net one first uh and then uh, install the vert io or the it's i think it's vio scuzzy is is the name of the storage driver location and do the windows 10 one um so you know again there's there's uh, the guide is really good about uh, pointing you uh, on how to do those things uh, if you're not familiar with it I'm not going to show you that process but you know let's let's just assume that you've you've got it installed um, and uh, you want to go ahead and you know you've shut the machine off after you've installed Windows you got everything updated uh, you got everything in there that you want and and now you're to the point where you want to actually pass through your GPU so where you add that is here under hardware again and you go to add and you add PCI device and uh, at this point there's a drop down and um, you know for me my NVIDIA card shows up right here GE Force GT 710B um, so the, the the first one here and the second one uh, is actually the uh, audio controller it's the HDMI audio so we're gonna pick the card itself uh, for the video and we're gonna do uh, leave ROM bar on we're gonna do um, all functions if you do all functions it's it's gonna pass through not only video but it's also gonna pass that audio through as well so and, and what these do it makes changes in that config file that that normally you would have gone in and done manually um, so we're not gonna do uh, the primary GPU at this point uh, that is uh, what uh, basically turns off the onboard controller and and forces you to have to use uh, the GPU but um, you know if you don't have the, the the right drivers in there or if you don't have um, 
Well, well, yeah, you're probably not going to have the right drivers in there because you haven't actually installed it yet. This is the process to do that. Uh, but and also, because you're using Q35, you have the option of, of choosing PCI Express. Um, so all of these things right here are, are, are the, what you're going to need to start off with. Again, we're doing things in stages. Uh, you've, you've you know, installed your virtual uh, machine of Windows 10, uh, you've updated it, and now you're getting to the point where you're adding the, uh, passing through the GPU. But you want both cards, you know, virtual cards in there. You want the host one that's going to give you the, the nice uh, VNC display console um, so that you can see it, uh, you know, natively from Proxmox. Uh, you're going to do that first, and, and then you know when you get the drivers in there and it's working and you don't get code 43 then you can come in here and actually select that uh, primary GPU box uh, when the machine is shut down and then when it starts up it'll only have the GPU in there um, so again you do that in stages so this is how you would add it it shows up right there um, you know I there are steps in his guide on passing a ROM file uh, and, and pulling yours out of there. If you've got a newer card like the 710 or above, um, you know, I, don't, I didn't have to do that for mine. Um, it, it just worked. Um, so not, not saying that you might not have to with your particular card, but, but this, this will work. Um, so, you know, once you've done that, uh, uh, you know, your, your drivers, it, it can be a little finicky inside of, of the Windows uh, virtual machine there. Uh, I, I have a feeling it has something to do with the order. Sometimes you get the code 43. You know, I would suggest uh, when you first fire it up and you've passed it through right here, you know, let Windows find it. You know, you'll probably get those pop-up banners in the right-hand corner saying, hey, you know, reboot your machine so that we can activate this, this uh, um, you know, 710. Um, but, but don't do that. Do the installer from NVIDIA. You go to their website, download the latest installer, and run that and install it, and then reboot the machine. Don't shut it down. Reboot it. Uh, so that way, when it comes back up, uh, you know, you haven't deapplied power, you know, virtually to this thing. Uh, so it should come up. It should find the device. It should actually give it the new NVIDIA driver, and you shouldn't have a code 43. So... Uh, that's in theory how you go through the process of adding the new, um, you know, the new process of adding a GPU and doing pass through. Um, if you want to go ahead and and create, you know, this beast rendering machine like I was trying to do here and give it 24 gigabytes, um, there's actually a, 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 you know, back in 2016 somebody solved that problem. So one of the things that you've got to do here is. Uh, uh, according to this page, and again, I'll put the link in there. The guy was having problems. He was getting the same error that I was getting. Um, and so this uh, gentleman came in here and gave him the answer after a little hunting and pecking. And here it is. So back uh, in the original guide that for uh, GPU pass-through, you know, one of the first steps is going in and setting that Intel underscore I O M M U equals on. And then I told you those extra arguments that I put there at the end. Well, um, these two are what you got to put into there and do the update dash grub again. Uh, or you can, you know, if you're planning on doing this, do it all at once. You know, when you're setting things up, you just make that uh, grub line and do it the one time. Uh, but huge pages. So, you know, if you add too much RAM, which is what I had done when I added 24 gigs to it, uh, I was getting timeout errors. Um, so adding this to the grub command there, and then um, the second piece of it is actually going into your config file again for, uh, you know, back in the SSH, uh, and, and I use that program Remoter to get in there. But you can do it from the console in Proxmox as well. You got to come in here and edit and add this line right here under memory. It's huge pages colon space two. And that's it. Um, I did those two things, added that grub line and, and edited the config file here. And, you know, suddenly my, my 24 gigs of RAM worked perfectly fine. Um, 
So, and then uh, one of the other things, so that was nice, one of the other things that I got working in there as well is I have a USB 3.0 card in inside of that machine, and you can actually pass through either the devices that you plug into it, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's under uh, hardware and under add, so under USB device, um, you know, don't, don't do the spice port, uh, so you can either... Uh, do the the device ID right here is this one so you're actually choosing the device or this one here you're actually choosing a particular port uh, and then you can actually select the flag if you want it to be USB 3.0 um, uh, in, in my case uh, I think mine was already there so uh, the only reason this shows up here was the key that took me a little bit uh, plug something in <laughs> so I know that seems like a no-brainer but uh, the car I was you know expecting to be able to come in here and you know, just select which of the four ports off of that, uh, you know, USB PCI card that I have in there for uh, 3.0, uh, but nothing was showing up. And uh, so I thought that was a little weird. So I thought maybe I had to add it as a PCI device. That really didn't work and uh, screwed up my virtual machine. Um, so uh, lesson learned here, plug something into the port and uh, that, that way it shows up and then you can select it and hit add and then there you go so again you do that when the virtual machine is shut down that is not plug and play um, so shut it down add that line to it reboot and uh, you know when I fire up my virtual machine it shows up and and uh, uh, you know is, is one of the I plugged in USB 3.0 uh, so I, I imagine because I passed through the device while I'm in the virtual machine if I was to unplug that um, you know it would notice it that it was it, it's the the devices are plug and play but the port doesn't show up and you can't map it unless you've got something plugged in there if that makes sense so from the virtual machines perspective you know the USB devices that you plug into that port will be plug and play um, so you know I, I kind of all over the place here I know it's 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 about the uh, GPU pass through but there are so many other uh, good features in here when you're trying to set up a virtual machine uh, in Proxmox uh, you know these little things the gotchas uh, you know I, I, I read a lot of the forums and I uh, you know see a lot of people bitching about well you know it's buggy well it turns out you know Proxmox is getting the bad rap on this because Proxmox works perfectly fine but there are things in, in under the hood that that Proxmox is using that they can make a little bit better you know like adding that a uh, simple flag for for making the CPU hidden you know that the 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 less that I have to SSH in and you know set things up inside of the um, you know the config file for each of these virtual machines the better if they had an interface where you could actually edit that on the fly in here that would be better too uh, but you know I love Proxmox uh, it's been working great for me um, love the updates uh, this is, is a lot easier than it was before uh, and you can get it to work. Uh, so again, I, I didn't go through all of the different steps in setting up the, the machine. Um, that would just take too long. I just kind of wanted to do an update here and hopefully feed you a couple of the, the tips and, and um, you know things that I ran into in trying to get this to work for myself. Um, so if, if this was at all helpful to you guys, uh, please you know subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to uh, grow my uh, subscriber base. I've got um, several hundred of you now and that's great I'm gonna try to keep making these videos and producing them um, but uh, yeah give, give a thumbs up or, or uh, leave me a comment on something that I may have missed or wasn't clear on uh, and uh, you know have a good one